Oh, there you are, YouTube. Chocolate advent calendar time. One and five. No. Well, Fifteen. Uh, what are we gonna five. find? Okay, Nana found it. Well, 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 where did you? What do you think's in there? <gasps> Ooh, what is that? Oh, it looks like a drum. Pull it out, see. I, I don't know how. What? Is this mine? Does yeah. that look like a drum? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is a drum. Ba rum ba bum bum. Oh my Yeah, awesome. Number 15. 15, what do we got? That's how we like my new ornament. Pottersville. Pottersville, what the heck? Oh wait, that's with that's Michael, Michael Shannon. Ch yeah. Shannon. Yeah, awesome, cool. Excited to check that out, we love him. Did you know mommy met Michael Shannon? Yep, hung out with him. No, why? Yeah, I did. My wife met Michael Shannon at a film festival called Ebert Fest, which is a film festival that Roger Ebert started. And they were screening the movie Take Shelter. Then after the movie, after everybody had left, Michael Shannon was just hanging out there in the front of the theater. And I think I think my wife said he was on a like pink bedazzled phone or something. And she just walked up to him and started talking to him. And they hung out for a while. It was pretty cool. But let's get to the movie Pottersville. Pottersville was pretty cool. Like, it has so many people in it, like Michael Shannon, uh, Judy Greer, um, uh, Hellboy, why did his name just leave my head? Ron Perlman, and uh, what is it, Ian McShane, right? Is that his name? Um, also, this other funny guy, I can't think of what his name is. He's in, like, um, I Love You, Man. He's in Harold and Kumar Christmas. Um, he's in other things. But anyway, like, the cast is pretty good. But it is a very, like, low-budget movie. One that doesn't feel like it, you know, would go to theaters. It feels straight to DVD. It kind of feels like, to me, it reminds me of, like, like a Bruce Campbell movie or something. In a way, like, um... I don't know, like uh, like Bubba Hotep or something. Like it sort of has that vibe to it. I feel like my hair is very flat today, um, and it's in a, like very unique premise, but also calls attention to "It's a Wonderful Life." It's called Pottersville, but basically, you have uh, Michael Shannon who owns a little like market, and he works at that place very hard and he's very good to the people who come in and gives them freebies and things like that and then um he's like working all the time right and then he gets this idea uh from Ian McShane that you know what he needs to 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 live life so he leaves home a little early or sorry leaves for home a little early um to bring his wife some flowers and just do things a little bit different right so um yeah leaves work early gets home, opens their bedroom door to greet her, and what does he find? He finds her with Ron Perlman, but not just with Ron Perlman, dressed as furries, like they're furries. She is dressed as a rabbit. Uh, Christina Hendricks, that, that's his wife in it, so she's another big name. Um, and Ron Perlman is dressed as a wolf, and he's like, what the heck? You know, I come home to do something different and here you are cheating on me. And they're like, no, there's no sex involved. We just rub against each other. And he's like, like this, like this makes a difference. And he's like, it's just a community. It's just a community. You know, it's not a big deal. We're just a club of people. And basically, you know, sort of ends the relationship there. And he sort of tail spins and then finds a, uh, he's like, ah, you, you want a, you want a furry? I'll give you a furry. Like he goes back to his shop and everything and he's drinking a lot, drinking a lot of moonshine and stuff. And then, um, so he's like, you know, talking to himself, you want a furry? I'll give you a furry. So he puts on a ghillie suit, goes to like his Halloween, uh, box, um, storage, and then like pulls out a, a gorilla mask and hands and things like that. And he starts running around town drunk, like screaming, like, ah, why, why, or whatever. You know, he's upset about his wife cheating on him. And a lot of people saw it happen, and then he, like, crashes at his uh, shop 
falls asleep there and then wakes up in the morning and like the news has gone wild over Bigfoot sightings that happened and everybody's like excited and uh, people are like coming into town to visit the town so the economy has boosted. People in the town are uh, like start selling like t-shirts, hats, buttons, merchandise, things like that for the um, uh, uh, you know the all the 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 what, 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 what <laughs> the tourists and like so like everybody's really happy in the town right everything was kind of like neutral and plain and people were struggling but now everybody has like all this income right and he sees that and he sees that it's making people's lives better so he's like oh, well I guess I gotta I gotta keep this up and then um, you know TV shows come and try and you know capitalize off of this outsiders come and try to capitalize off this and uh, try and catch the Bigfoot and then he's uh, spoilers, by the way. He's eventually caught, and it's discovered that it's him, and the townspeople are all upset. And Judy Greer, who worked at the market with him, was basically like, everybody, come on. You you have, like, um, you know, he, he mark, uh, puts your groceries down on... I don't actually I don't want to give this away but there she basically is just saying look at all the good things he's done for you he has helped you so much and he's never asked for anything you all sold your Bigfoot merchandise in his store and he never asked for a cut etc etc and then um, they're like yeah you're right we shouldn't be mad at him he didn't ruin our our lives or anything he made it you know really fun for a while and then at the end they all um, pay their debts, their grocery debts and market debts, and then like give him like percentages of like the sales they made and stuff like that. Cause his store was about to go out of business cause he was like hated. Nobody was going to his place anymore cause they were all upset. Um, and then they save his store and you know, again, it's very much like, uh, um, uh, it's, it's a wonderful life. And then the Pottersville, I think kind of like points to how, you know, this thing happened in the town and the town kind of got greedy a little bit and, um, never thought about him when all he was ever doing was thinking about them. Sure, it was a hoax. It was a hoax he didn't want to get into and he was ready to come clean, but he just saw the smiles and all the money that it brought into everyone's home who was struggling because the sawmill um, uh, uh, went under. And um, yeah, so saved his shop. And then he also went and saved the sawmill and turned it into a Bigfoot museum. I gave away everything. Is that okay? I just gave away everything. So I guess this is a spoiler review. I think I mentioned that earlier. So um, glad I covered my bases there. But I thought it was really good. I think it's worth a watch. Um, and, you know, it, it's low budget. It's cute. Um, I don't know. Is it, I, I, I enjoyed it. It's funny. Some of the stuff is a little over the top. Um, it has a nice retro feel to it, like if you've ever seen with also Michael Shannon. It doesn't fully grasp this exactly, but it has somewhat of like a shape of waterness to it, where everything just feels a little bit extra retro. Um, well, I guess Shape of Water is, takes place in that time period. But, you know, like, um, I'm trying to think like movies like Mouse Hunt or The Borrowers. Like, they don't take place in the past, but they look like they take place in the past, that sort of thing. Because it's, you know, modern day, but, like, the TVs are black and white and stuff like that. Uh, the furniture is older and stylized. So, yeah, has that aesthetic to it, um, but also, like, straight-to-DVD style, but with big stars in it. So, ultimately, I really liked it. Um, I like anything with Michael Shannon. I feel like he, he's going to pop up again in another one of our Christmas movies. Um, and, yeah, it's a... It's, it's very good. I, I mean, you know, ex expect not like, um, like going to the movie theater quality, you know, think like Bruce Campbell type stuff, you know, that sort of thing, like cheaper made movies, but with bigger names in it. Uh, I liked it. So I hope I'm not steering anybody the wrong way or over hyping it. Cause I, I don't mean to do that. Cause I don't, I don't think it, I, I don't, also don't want expectations to be ruined or whatever <laughs> because it's, again, think straight to DVD, but a good a good one, right? Really good one. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, have you seen the movie? I want to know what you think. If you have seen it, check it out. It's on Netflix. That's how we watched it. And perhaps I'll see you tomorrow for more Pure Hangout. <laughs>